Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining our session. Uh, we have two speakers co-presenting the talk today. Um, one is the Hao Yun Li, our founder and CEO of Luxio, and myself, founding engineer of VP Technology of Luxio. So the topic today is to making data access easy and fast for Ray. Uh, before we start, let's do a small poll here. How many of you have heard of Luxio before? Raise your hands. We <laughs> actually I see a good like, number, maybe 10 or 15 people. And how many of you are doing training, large-scale training using maybe 100 different GPU cards? One or two, three, four, OK. And how many of you are doing maybe large data processing, uh, not just related to training, but maybe also data, uh, big data query or data analytics, data processing? OK. I think maybe one third of the people in this, in this room. Good, good. So I think this talk will be relevant. Given the distribution is pretty even, I think this talk will be relevant to you guys. Okay. So uh, first, let's introduce ourselves. I'm Bin, uh, VP of Technology at Luxio, founding engineers at Luxio. And we also have Hao Yun Li, our CEO and the founder. So today, we're going to talk about uh, data access challenges in the AI and the machine learning in this setting. And specifically because this is the Summit for Ray, and we want to really highlight the story playing with Aloxio and Ray together. What is the benefits we can see here, and how, like, even why people want to think about this stack. And we also want to show some numbers and the benchmark. Okay. So, first of all, Ray, that's the, that's the reason we are here, right, for this summit. It's a distributed, designed for distributed training, has a distributed scheduler. So it can, has very efficient dispatch training jobs to available CPU and GPUs the resource, optimizing the resource utilization. Also, Ray provides you mod, many times some model, uh, model, modelers uh, very seamlessly to scaling horizontally of applications. Um, for example, you can write a Python project maybe with running at a small scale, even a single machine, and then you can use Ray easily scale your projects uh, your, your jobs to hundreds or thousands of different nodes, ensure the, but also ensuring the optimal performance at this scale, right? Also have the streaming data abstraction to provide, to facilitate the parallel and distributed data pre-processing to accelerate the workflow by handling the data streams efficiently, okay? So uh, when I'm talking to people in the Ray community, I'm, I'm saying, hey, I'm, I'm doing a Luxio, and a Luxio provides a data access or data caching layer for Ray, and also for other machine learning frameworks. I, I get two common questions for myself, okay? One is, how is this related to uh, the object store in Ray? One is, how this is related to the Ray data, okay? So let's first of all take a look at what is the Ray data. So Ray data is, uh, was announced last year when I was also here in the Ray Summit. So it was a scalable data pr processing library allows the Ray to process, to, to provide the streaming data sets for Ray applications. And it breaks down the large data set into smaller, small and manageable chunks and divide the training jobs into smaller tasks and assign the, the basically it's a very well-designed data loading process for many training applications. So we have seen very good results from the, if you see, if you remember, this is a blog uh, published, announced the last year in the Ray Summit. Uh, very, 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 very encouraging results from the Ray data. So put in that way, Ray data is more like a data abstraction or more like a data loading process, data loading framework to help read jobs to get data in the queue or in the message queue to, uh, to, the, to schedule the nodes. Well, Aluxio is a data platform. It provides you the data caching capability. So if you have data, uh, for example, special locality, spatial locality, or temporal locality, which means you have different training jobs, and if they access the same set of data repeatedly in, in different jobs or like a, in, the, in a relatively small time window, and you can benefit from having the data cached closer to read jobs, to your GPU applications. 
So that is what, how Ray data is different from Alexa. One is Ray data is more like a data loading and data, data loading process, data loading framework. Alexa is like a horizontal but like independent uh, framework to provide a caching capability. So I will show later how Ray data works together with Alexio and why this works. Okay. But okay. So basically, we have Ray data, we have a Ray object store, but still we are seeing this is uh, we get some screenshots from the uh, Ray Slack. So people are still asking questions, especially they have this repeatedly loaded entire and big data set for each each training epoch. And they want to share frequently accessed data across multiple different training jobs. Or they are suffering from cold start every training iteration with a relatively slow or congested storage. So um, we were serving the boots in the morning. Uh, actually, we get a lot of actually re users asking questions like this. I have situations like this because this is cross jobs or sometimes it's across different regions then how can, uh, so Ray data is not designed for this purpose. So how can you help us improve the performance and also reduce the cost implication beyond this providing this streaming uh, interface? So that's why we're talking about Alexio in this picture, okay? Uh, let's take one step back. If I'm going to train data at scale in the cloud using GPU, there are typically three options to access data for the training data set, okay? Uh, because we, we all know how large the data set this today it requires to train the model. The very first one is you can just ask your training applications to access data stored in your data lake, maybe on S3 or GC, GCS directly. Well, it's easy to manage because you always, the, the data lake on the cloud is designed to be very scalable and it's designed to be uh, for example, the single source of truth across this entire organization. So it's easy, it's easy to manage. Um, but the problem is, if you see, uh, this is from time to time, people are complaining about this, uh, if it was on AWS, this uh, status code 503, which means slow down, slow down. Okay, you're reading too much, you're reading too fast. So that is basically the uh, pushback uh, from this storage. Slow or inconsistent performance across the entire duration, but also high cost in access cloud storage. So we have a, a joint case study with a Uber and also CMU talking, we, we're just basically getting uh, some data from the, uh, from the trace and we found actually it's very high, it's very expensive if you just keep requesting data, even this a small amount of data from the cloud because that's how the charging, the pricing model works there, okay? The second option we see a lot is really to purchase another high speed, sometimes HPC storage, and putting this close to the training infrastructure. So this high speed or HPC storage provides the fast access to these training jobs. But the problem, so you get a very good IOs, IOPS per second, high throughput, like there are HPC storage designed for this uh, for a decade. So there's a lot of available options there. Well, the problem is this typically, they are relatively costly uh, infrastructure, and plus, oftentimes it requires extra steps to do the data migration and data maintenance. Um, plus, if you also have multiple different training frameworks, sorry, training uh, resources in different regions or even across the cloud, then you have, and you still want to maintain a single source of truth using the single data lake, then you have to guide, you have to buy two different, these kind of solutions, which is even more expensive, okay? So we have seen customers uh, asking questions like this a lot. It's basically, they think this is not scalable, especially given that today, GPU scarcity is still kind of like a norm, and people try to just allocate their GPUs whenever they can get GPUs across different cloud providers or across even like different regions. So this becomes also costly, but still it gets good performance, the trade-off you have to make. Well, uh, another interesting point we are seeing is typically less than 10% data of your entire data set is hot. So to me, this is basically a classic caching problem. So add another caching layer between the compute and data lake instead of purchasing more storage, uh, expensive storage, okay? So 
uh, we have seen this kind of like we propose this solution. Hey, if you have this problem, think about this architecture. Instead of having another storage expensive and you have to maintain it, put in a caching layer, respect your data lake. And this caching layer can be relatively uh, can be cheaper than HPC storage, but also it performs as good or even better than this storage because they are purposely designed for the machine learning type of workloads. Uh, we'll talk about later, like why, why, why there's a chance like even doing it better there. Okay, so essentially adding a data access or caching layer between the compute and this data lake storage can preserve your single source of truths from data lake, but also solve the high demand for IOPS per second, a high throughput, and share this cache and can cross different uh, AI workloads and analytics. Okay, so you get all these prones and you get a fast data access from the hot data cached. So you don't have to purchase, by the way, if you have a, say 10 petabytes of the entirety of the data, you don't have to purchase the, uh, you don't have to provision a cache with 10 petabytes. It's not necessary. You just need to think about it, like what is the amount of the capacity you need for when the largest training job or the concurrent uh, training capacity you need, okay? So that can be much smaller than the entirety of the uh, data set. So let's go back, think about it in the Ray ecosystem, okay? So what we are providing as a Luxio is really a caching layer to provide a high performance of distributed caching on top of this persistent storage, persistent data lake on S3 or Azure or GCS. And you can run the machine learning frameworks like a PyTorch or TensorFlow on top of that and orchestrate it by Ray. So that is how we view this stack. Uh, HY, you can talk about the next few slides. All right. So hear me all right? Thank you. So uh, thank you, Bin. Pleasure to be here uh, at the Ray Summit. So I'm going to uh, talk a little bit about the uh, uh, Aluxio's history uh, as well as Aluxio plus Ray. So from the very high level, like Aluxio, we serve data to all the data-driven applications like AI, like uh, large-scale analytics, et cetera. And in this particular setting, so it is the key tagline, if you, the one sentence you remember, is Aluxio sellers AI. So we have many, many case studies. So essentially from this uh, like uh, figure, you can see in the uh, architecture or in the ecosystem, how the stacks looks like. You have different type of uh, AI compute frameworks on top of a Luxio and can run, and this environment, uh, this framework plus a Luxio can run in different type of environments, different clouds, as well as on-prem as well. And in the meantime, a Luxio will abstract and virtualize the data from different storage environments. It could be any object store, any file system you are using today. So essentially, from this perspective, uh, people deploy Aluxio very close to the compute side AI frameworks and use Aluxio to provide the easy data access using the global namespace to provide the easy data access of the data stored in different storage systems and also use Aluxio's distributed caching feature to accelerate the read of the data in a very significant way. So this is a high level how like the, uh, like the uh, stack looks like. And the goal of this framework, uh, a goal of Aluxio system, also try to make the upper layers developer's job as easy as possible besides like bringing the performance acceleration, ease of data access. Also, it will enable, as long as you deploy this in your infrastructure, you do not need your application developers to change a single line of their code. Whatever worked before, it should automatically work, essentially. And you will see all different type of performance improvements or uh, work efficiency work efficiency improvement. And we have use cases later on talk about like how using like Ray or different type of frameworks running on top of a Luxio, change the training job from four hours to be one hour, from four weeks to be one week. 
that means that like say, uh, for the machine learning engineers running on your platform, instead of finishing their job over a year time frame, they probably can finish over three to four months, which is a significant boost. This is a uh, high level. And then uh, just to talk a little bit regarding our technology journey. It's a um, open source software started from the UC Berkeley around 10 years ago. And uh, at the beginning, actually very quickly, at the beginning, we have some uh, large like uh, internet users start to run Alexio in production. And along the way, you can see at the beginning, big data analytics, cloud adoption, and now it's AI. And you can see along the way, we have today, uh, nine out of the 10 largest market cap internet companies. They are all running the software in production today. And uh, one of the largest FinTech company, Alipay, they're running 80% their model training on top of this framework, on top of this system as, as well. And uh, many global leading e-commerce company running this uh, software uh, in production as well. And this is a just slightly some logos on the uh, on the picture to show the company are uh, running the software uh, in production today. As you can see, majority of these companies they are a tech forward company. Uh, typically, as long as you have a lot of data, you have a lot of data in your environment. If your business rely on the data itself, a lot of times they will find more value of uh, uh, deploying and using a software like Alexio. And uh, it's a tech, internet, financial service, e-commerce, telecom, and media, et cetera. And like being mentioned, from the AI perspective, if you have AI training side, if you have model deployment, if you have model serving, it's just the Alexio will accelerate your AI journey. That's a, uh, what we do. So uh, we have some open source uh, topic here. I will leave it to Bin to uh, further, uh, further uh, explain this different uh, usage and the uh, little bit history as well. And uh, welcome any uh, like conversation afterward as well. Thank you. OK. Uh, I'm coming back to the stage. Basically, uh, this is a, I, I steal the slide from HY. Uh, this is a, he did this slide maybe 10, more than 10 years ago when this is doing the UC Berkeley retreat, UC Berkeley MPLA retreat. So uh, during the school days, this, is, this project was called Taekyang. It's, it's meant to be designed for reliable memory-centric distributed storage for uh, off-heap storage, uh, off storage for RDDs in Spark. But later on, we, we make this as a more general purpose of storage. But essentially, yeah, so this is, has a lot of his, long history, uh, root, also rooted from Berkeley and get a lot open source adoption in the early days. Uh, so <laughs> in the early days, it's more like designed. For, uh, I'm, basically, I'm just sharing the journey, sharing the journey of this uh, open source project and how it goes to the AI ML workloads. In the early days, it's heavily modeled after HDFS. If you're familiar, HDFS has the single uh, name node as a metadata service and different data nodes as a, uh, you, you shard the workers, shard your data to different data nodes, okay? So it's heavily modeled after HDFS, but also have the con unique concept called the ender, ender storage. So if the data is stored, uh, cached in the worker, and then you, ha you don't have to go to the ender storage data cache. Uh, cache hit. Otherwise, you go to uh, on the cache mess, you go to end your storage. And the metadata, there's also metadata. In early days, uh, we all know name node is a bad design uh, in HDFS, but still, um, you don't have the huge amount of the, you don't have the huge demand to store uh, billions of files, or you have the federation to solve the problem. But uh, also, in a similar sp spirit, we're using a raft to, con to coordinate a different master. Master is very similar to uh, name node as a a centralized uh, metadata service, okay. Problems, okay. Uh, maybe about three to four years ago, we start to see problems if you are using this architecture to serve this uh, machine learning training problem. Especially the HDFS interface versus POSIX, like a different object stores, uh, sorry, uh, latest uh, frameworks, there, they like to use POSIX APIs. And also in the early days, there are YARN, they are bare, deployed on the bare metal. These days it's all Kubernetes. Uh, early days, it's more like a structured data, but these days we, uh, in, in the parquet files, or RIC files for big data query engines. But these days for multi-model, 
with model training, you see more and more unstructured data in audio picture, or video picture, or text. Okay, metadata service performance also becomes critical, especially for this multi-modal training. We have seen uh, one of the largest uh, deployment of Luxio. They are using Luxio to serve one petabytes of data and more than one billion files for one training jobs. So this is a, you cannot imagine this like in the big data world. Highly concurrent jobs because they are using GPUs and also in the training duration is from hours to days and weeks to train a job, which means reliability becomes the key. Also model checkpointing uh, takes the GPU time down. So we also want to make sure, like users want to make sure faster rides through checkpointing, checkpointing the model becomes really crit uh, crucial. Okay, so we re-architected Alexio to help this type of workloads. So essentially, uh, today, it's, there is no single point of failure. We removed this master node. Instead, we have these uh, different workers using consistent hashing to coordinate workers and data sharding to workers. So we don't have to always go to the master to get where data is, just like in HDFS. Uh, aside from that, there is a lot of uh, also optimizations to enable zero copy and other uh, items. So essentially, uh, yeah, under the hood, we use consistent hashing to cache both the data and the metadata on workers to reduce the IO RPC length. Uh, also, no single point of failure to get improved reliability, no performance bottleneck on the master because there's no master, and remove the master from the critical path so no more journal. Journal is not required anymore to store the file system state. So all this, uh, uh, along with the other resource and the performance optimizations, they are heavily, heavily inspired by, hey, we have this training type of workloads. It's read heavy, uh, or sometimes read only. I only need to write is to checkpointing these models. Okay, so we can get rid of a lot of assumptions. And also, uh, it's perhaps just like a, doing this uh, simpler, we, we, have a sim we have a smaller set of APIs exposed to these applications, or they only use a smaller set of applications. So we can get rid of like a lot of complicated design to coordinate uh, like a f file log, the directory log, these type of things. So key features by the numbers. So we can get a tens of gigabytes per worker, and because it's a consistent hashing, you can scale the total system throughput by adding more workers, almost linearly, okay? Uh, caching per loading, uh, we redesigned this system so we get a fully, we can fully, almost always fully utilize the storage network uh, to load data to this storage, to the Luxus space. Low latency, uh, we have seen like we can achieve sub milliseconds or single digit uh, milliseconds latency for faster response. Uh, in comparison, if you use S3, the typical latency you see is like 100 milliseconds. So that's a two folds, uh, two orders magnitude is better. Scaling linearly in capacity, just blindly you can just add workers according to consistent hashing, and we're able to support tens of billions of objects and files, which is Im super important for today's machine learning workloads. High availability, we want to make sure there's no single point of failure, no single metadata centralized metadata service, so the model training jobs can succeed, like if you're running multiple uh, days or weeks. Okay, Ray, okay, so last summit, when I was here, uh, we were talking about, hey, we can use the POSIX API to talk to, to let read to read Alexio. But that sounds cool, but still, there's one more step, okay? So after that, we have been working closely uh, with, the, with this Ray stack. So Ray is using PyArrow underneath to read data uh, from different storage engines, and PyArrow is using a library called FSSpec. It's in Python. So we also implemented the, uh, what, uh, the, the FSSpec implementation for Alexio. So now we can, you, this, is a, this is also a recommended approach to use, integrating Ray with Alexio. We don't have to go through the Fuse uh, or a part, uh, yeah, Fuse API to get, a, there's a lot of limitation there, but essentially this is a sample code. Uh, we're working on to even simplify this, even simplify this uh, Ray, how the integration with Ray by just respecting a lot of the uh, Python APIs, okay? Uh, I have five minutes, I try to go fast, okay, benchmark. So uh, a typical benchmark people are doing this in the machine learning world on storage side is a micro benchmark called IFIO 
or there's also macro benchmark called the ML, uh, MLPerf, okay? So uh, I only show the FIO benchmark here. So we compare Alexio, uh, the AI32, which is not even not the latest version. Actually, we have a better one now, uh, with some scalable NAS solution, and also with uh, uh, HPC storage like FSX, which is based on last year. So as you can see, uh, this is on the AWS. We can, uh, Alexio can provide much better uh, throughput, especially even under the heavy load of a lot of concurrent reads. Uh, this is for, I think this is for, uh, I forget, this is for random reads or for oh, sequential, sequential reads. So this is basically, uh, we're able to achieve uh, with one thread, we can get two gigabytes. And with the 32 threads, we peak to uh, 81, uh, sorry, eight gigabytes. So this is what we can provide here. Um, another interesting, like as I mentioned earlier, uh, Ray has the Ray data, which is the data, pr data loading library or pipeline to help Ray core to, to get data, more pipelining, okay? So we have done this uh, Ray data versus using Ray data on top of Luxio on S3. And we're saying we're able to uh, even speed up, this is end-to-end -end throughput, which is image per second, this is doing a CV training. We're able to improve that by uh, 3.5x, and we're do running the same benchmark uh, using, used by the Ray, uh, Ray, Ray block, like uh, we have the, the official block. Uh, lastly, I just want to show one simple use case. This is uh, how users are viewing this technology and how they can use this for their machine learning pipeline in production. Okay, this is already in production. So in the middle column, this is, is, a, this is a, a called offline cloud. This is their data lake. They have this using HDFS as the centralized data lake. They want to have a single source of choose. Okay, but they also have the training uh, infrastructure in one cloud, and also have the online serving cloud for a different uh, in, uh, infrastructure for on a different cloud. Okay, so what they have done is to use Alexio uh, to basically bridge their different clouds in different different regions for sure. And uh, once the training, uh, you, you can use Alexio to serve the training by speeding up the training process. But also after data is served to the training pipeline and the model files are created, we can also help speed up the, the time to make these models available on this inferencing cloud. Okay, so that's, that was shown on the right hand side. So first of all, on the training side, we're able to improve, this is a LLM training of GPU utilization from 50 to 93%. But also on the uh, model di dis distribution or model deployment side, we're able to reduce their uh, original time to disseminate the model files from this centralized data lake to these different model inferencing machines from 20 minutes to five minutes. And this is, they are doing the online training, uh, online model training and online learning. And this is super critical for them to increase this uh, user engagement. So we're able to get two to four X faster time to market. Okay. Uh, the key takeaway, uh, we, are help, we can help the overcoming the IO bottlenecks in a scalable AI training. So uh, Alexio can help accelerate the AI. Uh, we can maximize the efficiency uh, with Ray plus Alexio in this setting. We uh, have two minutes left, so maybe take one question. Yeah, so we're not in the level of a rose. And the, the question is, what's the caching strategy? Uh, we, caching strategy we're supporting here, especially he's talking about in the next five, in, the, in five minutes, we're going to use these five rows and how we can do that, okay? So first of all, uh, let me just clarify. We're not doing a, so files are like, we're orthogonal to files. Like, we're serving files byte to byte identical to what is stored on S3. So we do not understand, if, if, if each row, if, if the file has multiple different rows, we do not understand which part of the bytes in this file belongs to which row, okay? So that is not understand by Alexio. But go back to a question. So 
if you have your knowledge which part of the files in this data set will be needed for next training jobs in settings like this. We have the, uh, I just mentioned briefly, we have the command you can run to preload the data into Alexio. So that's one approach. Okay, just preload the data into, into the cache. But if you do this passively, so which means the part you touched in this big data set will be passively lift to the caching space. And the benefits of that is if the file is, a, like for example, it's a parquet files. We have seen cases from customers owning the, owning the header and the footers are needed a lot. So uh, if this is passively loaded, it's perhaps uh, we do not even need to load the majority of the data part, owning the footer and the, part of the uh, footer and the, and, and the header. So uh, that is another way. So we have seen customers using, uh, they have a petabytes of the data lake, all parquet files on S3. They want to really reduce the access latency or increase the serving um, concurrency to this uh, parquet files or to this data lake. So they just deploy another Alexio layer on this uh, parquet data lake. Okay. Uh, basically, to back to your answer, so if you know which file you want to read in the next five minutes, you can run a command to preload the data. Uh, or you can just rely on some passively, you can just run the data query uh, like a, ahead of time to exercise which part of data to be lifted. Yeah. And then you also can cache um, part of the file. Part of, sorry? So like yeah, we can, we can, we can, yes, yes, yes. So the granularity is pretty small. It's like on the order of megabytes. You can configure, configure that. Yeah, thank you. Okay, uh, we'll be here. So welcome to uh, to find us, me or HY, uh, to answer more questions. So you mentioned the Alexio booth and the expo hall. Oh yes, yes. Yeah, we have the booths on S seven, and you can scan this QR code. Uh, we have a uh, uh, to learn about the resource and meetups, coming meetups. Thank you. <laughs>